So my friends over at Al Haramain Perfumes just sent me a bunch of fragrances from two different collections. Let's check them out. Next. Started. This video is being sponsored by Al Haramain Perfumes, but as always, all opinions are my own. Yes, yeah, so like I mentioned at the top of the video, my friends over at Al Haramain sent me over a few different fragrances here. We got about, I think there's seven. This is a lot of fragrances, guys. I need to try to keep this video uh, as short as possible because there is a lot of fragrances here. Um, there's two different collections, and we're going to go over all of them. Um, to save a little bit of time, I will show you guys a presentation. Uh, one bottle from each collection, because they all look exactly the same, except for the colors. They change a little bit. Um, but, uh, yeah, so there's two different uh, collections. So the first one is called the Musk, the Musk Series, and the other one is called the 50 Years Fragrance Line. So I guess they've been in the business for 50 years, so they made a fragrance line uh, that's uh, celebrating that and I do have some cheat sheet cheat sheets here, guys. So forgive me if you guys hear the paper papers rustling, but there's a lot of information here, and I had to write it down. So um, I will start with a little bit of information about the company. I don't know a lot about Ahermain perfumes. I do uh, know they come from overseas in the Middle East, I, I believe, and I, I have owned some of their fragrances in the past, and I believe. The ones that I've had owned anyways uh, have been clones. Like one of my favorites is uh, Royal Stallion. That's a clone of uh, Parfums and Marley's Pegasus. But I'm not sure if they're exclusively a clone uh, clone house. We will see. Uh, I'll definitely let you guys know if these fragrances remind me of anything else on the market. I haven't tried everything. So maybe maybe it's resembling something that came out. And I just haven't tried yet. Um, but I'm not, I can't say, I guess, that they're an exclusive uh, clone house. So we'll just say that. You know, they're just a house that puts out perfumes. Um, but I do a little bit of information to, to keep it brief so this video isn't too long. A little bit of information about um, Al Haramain perfumes is ever since the first bottle was released in the summer of 1970, Al Haramain perfumes has steadily grown in stature, putting together a fragrant network of spectacular showrooms all over the UAE, Oman, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, uh, Bahrain, uh, Kuwait, Qatar, Singapore, Malaysia, UK, and the U.S., uh, and winning accolades, appreciation, and hearts along the way. So that's just a brief little bit uh, of information about the company. And again, guys, if you guys, um, if any of these sound good or, or if I happen to, to like any of these, I'm going to put all their information down in the description below so you guys can go on their shop and pick any of these up. I'll probably repeat that again in this video at some point. But we need to get get on to this video because, again, I'm trying to keep it as short as possible. Uh, I will get, show you guys one uh, presentation of each one. And I will say that the first one that I, uh, that I opened came uh, with something di uh, extra that the other two didn't come from. And we're going to start with the, uh, the Oud collection, uh, the yeah, 50, 50 Years Fragrance line. Uh, they all have the word Oud in it. That's why I said Oud collection. Um, but we're going to start with um, Golden Oud. And the reason why I picked this one first because, so here's the presentation. Here's the box. Um, this one came with some fragrance beads. I believe they're fragrance beads. I've seen other houses use these. This is a... This is a gorgeous looking set of beads here. Like this is a this is pretty high end for to throw it in there. Not sure um, if they just gave me one to be polite because they're sending me a bunch of fragrances. Uh, but it does say 50, 50 years there and has a little tassel here. And I believe um, you're supposed to like maybe put uh, some of the fragrance on here because I've seen other companies do this. And this is a Qatar, I think. If you guys can see that, um, the other two didn't come with it, so I'm not sure if you guys are going to get these same. Uh, beads and, and little, uh, I'm sorry, I said, I meant said guitar, I meant attar. Um, if the little attar is going to come with the other fragrances or if it just comes with this one. Um, so that's why I started with this particular fragrance because it did come with those, those beads in it. But here's the box. Uh, it does have like a, I guess, suede sort of, of, of feel to it. Um, but it is very light, very thin cardboard, but you know, it looks nice. Um, opens up from the top like so. Just really, really big, really big box does uh, take care of the fragrance uh, just fine. Uh, but the uh, the uh, showstopper and the eye catcher is gonna be the bottle or here, here it comes in another in another presentation here. Um, it, it looks sort, sort of like a, some sort of a gazebo maybe kind of. Um, but this looks pretty cool. I believe this is, it's like a very light metal. I don't know if it's plastic. It feels like metal, but it could be. Actually, I think, yeah, it's plastic for sure. But it opens up like so. And then here is the bottle. Um, and here's the inside of that, if you guys want to see it. Um, and here's the bottle. I believe it's the same material um, on the outside. Um, could be metal. or I don't, I don't, Maybe it's glass and it's just really painted. It looks like it's glass on the inside. I don't know, but it looks really, really cool. 
And this one does have a little uh, 50 years thing here. And so, yeah, so this is uh, gonna be Golden Oud um, from the 50 years line. I'm trying to see if this is attached. Yeah, that's attached. That does not move, I, I don't think anyway. Um, the, yeah, they stuck it on with a little piece of uh, glue or something. Um, but so this is um, Golden Oud. So Golden Oud is an amber spicy fragrance. Um, in the top notes, we have thyme, sage, black pepper, and clove. In the mid, we have rose, resins, patchouli, oud. And the base, round things off with oud, amber, sandalwood, vanilla, and musk. So they put two ouds in there. And, I, and some companies do that. I don't know why they do that. Two different kinds of ouds, maybe. Not really sure. All right, so I'm going to pop the cap. I believe, yeah, nice gold atomizer here. Cap comes off like so, that, so it wasn't permanently stuck on there. And just going to take a quick first impression, guys. I have a lot of fragrances here, and we're already around the seven minute mark. So let's, let's see what this fragrance is about. And I'll give you guys just quick, quick thoughts on this one. Good sprayer. Okay. So these are going to be Oud fragrances. Um, so I'm definitely getting the Oud right off the bat, but this is, um, very spicy, very spicy and sweet. Um, this one's actually really, really good. I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to move as fast as I can with these fragrances, guys. I'm going to keep saying that because there's just a lot of information here. So I'm not trying to rush this. Literally, I haven't tried any of these fragrances until just now. But this fragrance doesn't remind me of, of anything specifically off the bat, but it smells really, really good. I'm getting an oud, uh, but it's not over the top. It's not super barnyardy. It's not super Middle Eastern. It's a little bit Middle Eastern, but not that much. I'm getting the black pepper, the clove, the sandalwood, and the vanilla. Um, not getting a lot of rose because everyone makes a rose oud combo, and this is not... Uh, your typical rose oud combos. Definitely spicy, very, very spicy, woody, and sweet with the oud notes. So right now, this is going to be the front runner right now because um, um, I'm looking at some of the other notes in, in uh, this uh, particular line. I'm not really sure if I'm going to like those, but this one right here, I can see myself wearing this one in, in the wintertime because um, it's very, very spicy. So, and I'll try to go, if I have time, I'll go back to uh, these at the end of the uh, video. The next one on the list is going to be Platinum Oud. And again, same bottle, same everything, just different color. A uh, nice silver bottle here. And so Platinum Oud is going to be next. Um, the notes for Platinum Oud in the top, we have cardamom, black pepper. In the mid, we have cedarwood, dry wood, and vetiver. And the base, we run things off with amber, musk, and tonka bean. Uh, it's considered a woody, ambery, spicer, spicy fragrance. So it's... Give this one a first impression. It does have the name right there as well, if you guys can read that. But these are very heavy, sturdy bottles. Man, this is a really nice um, presentation. Wow. Okay. This one sort of reminds me of something I've tried before. I can't picture it right off the bat, but this is very sweet. Very woody. It's dry and woody. Yeah, this is very sweet. Um, it's a little powdery. Getting some sweet vanilla in there too. Um, man, this reminds me of something. I just can't figure out what it reminds me of. Not sure if it's a clone of, of that or not, but it reminds me of something. But I do, this is not a bad little fragrance. It's super powdery and spicy and sweet. Very, very, very woody. Uh, I could definitely see myself wearing this one as well. Guys, you guys know I keep it 100% real, and they asked me, hey, give, let us know what you think about these fragrances. You don't have to be nice to us. But this one is very, very nice. Uh, I do think the first one um, is still right now the front runner, but this is not bad at all. I think this is going to be a winter fragrance as well. It's, I can't see myself wearing this one in um, the, the warm weather. There's definitely a fall fragrance or winter. Yeah, very powdery, very sweet and woody. I'm going to have to go back to these. That way I can let you guys know after a few minutes uh, of, of passing if these actually remind me of anything um, because they might. So the final one of the 50-year anniversary um, line uh, is pretty, um, like I was saying before, this one is called Rose Oud. Um, and this one has, yeah, the names right here. Rose Oud and the notes of this fragrance. In the top, we have bergamot, pink peppercorn, and galbanum. In the mid, we have cedarwood and sandalwood. In the base, round things off with oud, oak moss, and musk. Now, 
I am a little confused here because um, there is no rows in these notes that I have here. So maybe maybe I forgot to write that down. So we're gonna assume there's gonna be rows in this. I'll let you guys know in a second. Uh, again, it could have been uh, could have been my error. I just you know because I was writing down a lot of information there, and uh, I could have easily forgotten to put rows in there. But right now, from what I see, there's no rows in this. Kind of weird. Here we go. It'll get there. Just there it goes. Needs to get some air in the tube. Wow. Wow. Okay. This is a lot of pink pepper. This is super bright, super zingy and fizzy. I get the bergamot. I get a ton of pink pepper. I mean, this is like, this smells like royal oud almost. Not exact. I'm saying the, the kind of pink pepper mixed with the cedar in that. This has cedar in it as well. I'm not going to say this is a Royal Oud clone, but this reminds me of Royal Oud. This is the first one that's reminded me of anything specifically um, of the three that I've tried so far. But this is definitely not exactly like it. This is super heavy on the cedar, super heavy on the pink pepper, and it's fresh. Hmm. I get like an, a, a rose sort of... A smell to it again it's not in the deal i'll have to go back and, and look um but it, i get like almost like maybe some notes were, were thrown in here if there's no ro rose in this then some of the notes in here are combining to smell like rose but this definitely isn't your mom's old school rose this isn't grandma's rose fragrance um just think royal oud but way fresher maybe way way uh spicier way way uh zingier So, man, these three are good in their own right, and that, that is not a joke. Uh, I, I didn't know what I was expecting. I really was expecting grandmas or, like, um, all the rose oud combinations you get from around the world, like the Middle Eastern oud and then the strong rose note and, that's, and a little bit of woods. That's what I was expecting with this one. This isn't that at all. Again, royal oud is what I'm sort of getting with this one, but I'm not going to say it's exclusively a clone because Al Haramain makes some pretty good clones, and... Uh, they they could get a lot closer to Royal Oud if they really um, wanted to try to uh, copy Royal Oud. But this is a very, very good for All three of these are very good in their own right. I'm going to go back to the dry downs here, here in a little bit. Um, but I will say I'm very impressed by those three. And I'm actually a little, I'm not going to say shocked, but but uh, because, you know, they are a clone. A lot of them sort of had their own thing going so far. The next collection is going to be, um, that was the 50 Years Fragrance line. The next fraction, uh uh, collection is going to be the musk series now guys i will say that i'm not a big fan of musk because musk is usually like in the base and you can sort of get that you know towards the end of a fragrance is sort of what you get left afterwards um so for them to name a whole line uh after uh the note of musk is a little was a little off-putting to me um but not the end of the world uh, definitely willing to try these fragrances. I will start with Amber Musk, and I'll show you guys um, the presentation. Now, if you guys are familiar with Al Harmain, this does look like their tobacco collection boxes. The bottles do not look like that, but if you guys uh, have, are familiar with that, I think I, I've done a couple of videos on uh, that, but I, I do think they sort of kept the same box um, to, to make this line. So if you guys are familiar with that box, you guys are familiar with this. Again, it does open like a little little coffer, little coffin, if you got, if you will. Um, very nice box here, very heavy and sturdy. So Al Harmain definitely gets a 10 across the board when it comes to their presentations. Um, some could be a little bit gaudy, some could be a little bit, you know, uh, gimmicky, but they always put in high quality on their, uh, their glasses are always thick, the plastic, they always got little, little uh, trinkets and ornaments and stuff like that. And maybe you guys don't need that, but I think it's, it's, a, it's an added plus. Um, so here's the bottle. This, this fragrance here is Amber Musk, if you guys see the name right there. We do have a metal cap, very heavy cap here. Uh, it's a nice rose gold. Uh, step up atomizer. Um, so again, Amber Musk, let's start with that one. The top we have, uh, this is considered an ambery oud, by the way, excuse me. Uh, in the top we have Amber Oud and White Musk. In the mid we have Rose, Raspberry, Birch, and Saffron. And in the base we run things off with Benzoin, Amberwood, and Geranium. So a lot of good notes there. Again, I, you know how I got, I like talking about the notes and what I think it's going to smell like. But again, we're pressed for time here. So I'm going to go ahead and just do a first impression of the Amber Musk. Will it smell like anything else? We'll, we'll find out here pretty quick. So let's give it some, a try. 
good sprayer on this one. A lot of juice. Okay. Um, not a bad little fragrance. I'm getting rose. I'm getting raspberry. I'm getting saffron. I'm getting some of the benzoin because it's sweet. I'm not getting a lot of oud. And really, right now, quick, quickly, that's about it. The raspberry is really nice in this. Um, it sort of reminds me of the raspberry that's in Tuscan Leather. Or the Rasazi, uh, their Tuscan Leather clones. Very, very fruity and sweet. Not, not a bad little fragrance, um, honestly. Um, not blowing my socks off, but it smells really nice. It's very inoffensive. I mean, when you have oud in like a, a lot of these fragrances, you, you don't know what you're gonna get. And Al Harmain being a Middle Eastern company, um, these these aren't really like your typical Middle Eastern ouds or anything. This one's super duper fruity. Very, very sweet. I'm getting the amber now, the amber, the amber and the amber wood. It's very, very woody. It's slightly spicy. Super fruity. Not a bad little fragrance right there. On to the next one. All right, we have Musk Malachi or Musk Maliki. You guys can tell me. Here's the here's the name of it right there. Musk Maliki or Malachi. You guys can let me know down in the comments below. Uh, but Musk Maliki or Malachi uh, is a fruity, fresh, green fragrance. Um, and in the notes in the top, we have green apple, lemon, and violet leaf. In the mid, we have Moroccan jasmine. Uh, rose and geranium and the base to round things off with narcissus musk and sandalwood now this might be the fresh one of the line uh you can't see that it is a yellow glass um but with some of these notes it sounds like it might be pretty pretty good so let's 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 go forward here see what this fragrance is all about and again i want to thank uh thank al haramain for sending me all these fragrances this is fantastic i mean usually i, I do like samples um but this is fantastic having full bottles of this stuff Okay, now, right now, I will say, I, and I, I do think all these fragrances are unisex. I didn't mention that in the, in the beginning. I think every single one of these is unisex. This one, I think, leans the most feminine because I'm getting a lot of, a lot of, I guess, the jasmine because this thing is like, I don't think it's geranium. I know exactly what geranium smells like. And this is a jasmine bomb. I'm getting the lemon. And the green apple's there because I'm getting a little bit of a bite. But it's not like super fruity or sweet from the fruit. I'm getting green notes. Fresh, watery green notes. A little bit of fruit. A little bit of citrus. A boatload of jasmine, if that's what I'm getting. It's very floral. And I think it's jasmine. And this definitely reminds me of something maybe my mom used to wear or just a perfume that I've tried in the past. But this stuff is strong. Like this geranium note, or I'm sorry, this jasmine note is very, very strong. But not a bad fragrance, not at all. I'm thinking this is going to be a super strong fragrance. This is going to be best for the warmer weather. I mean, the the, the um, jasmine note's fading and you, you really are left with a very almost it smells almost like white floral but I don't really see a lot of white floral in this um but yeah the jasmine almost has like a, a white floral feel to it it's woody and fruity and fresh so uh that is musk malachi um if that's what you guys are calling it all right so royal <coughs> excuse me royal musk is the next fragrance so royal musk is a citrusy fresh powdery fragrance does come in a blue bottle, guys. So we might be getting um, maybe a, a oceanic or a aquatic or something like that. We'll see. Uh, but citrusy, fresh, and powdery. In the top for Royal Musk, we have bergamot, pepper, and ylang ylang. In the mid, we have jasmine, lily of the valley, and orris root. In the base, round things off with musk and beeswax. So there's a lot of a lot of crazy notes in this that I wouldn't think um, would go together, but apparently they do. So we'll see what this fragrance. Again, citrus, fresh, and powdery. Here we go. Um, Royal Musk. A couple of sprays. All right. Okay. Okay. Uh, this is definitely not a clone of anything. I've never smelled this before. 
I've smelled similar things in life, but this isn't like standing out as anything in particular. This one's very, very light. If, if anything, I know that musk has a bit of a light airiness to it with a slight sweetness. I'm getting a lot. So this one isn't very strong. I'm getting all the floral notes. I mean, this has a lot. This has jasmine, lily of the valley, ylang ylang. So I'm getting a slight citrus on top, but it's very slight. A bunch of florals and musk. Um, not really getting beeswax that I've tried in the past that I'm used to. But um, this fragrance might surprise me because I, I'm, I'm like, and I've also smelled so many others, but out of all of them, this might be the lightest one so far. And again, I probably failed to mention, these are all Eau de Parfums. So these are all going to be super high quality. But right now, this one is, um, this was definitely, this. it leans feminine as well with all of the uh, floral notes. But it's not 100% feminine. I just think it leans more feminine. But not a bad fragrance. Um, this is going to be definitely a uh, summer day, warmer weather fragrance. Um, because right now, I'm getting it. And it's got a little bit of punch to it. But not like these other ones that I've tried. So that is Royal Musk. And guys, I am going to go over uh, all these again here um, in a minute. That's why I'm sort of speeding through these. So I'll have time to come back and, and actually get the dry down for some of these and then go over the notes again. Um, so this is the um, final uh, fragrance from the uh, Musk Collection. And uh, it's a, no better way to really name this fragrance than Musk Collection. So as you guys can see here, I don't know if they ran out of ideas or if they, this is maybe just their signature fragrance to, to, to really envelop the entire uh, line of uh, this line here, which is it's cool with me uh, if that's the case. Um, but let's see here. Musk Collection is a, let's see here. Musk Collection is uh, a citrus, fresh, aromatic fragrance, which might be, might be, it might be leaning it, uh, you know, creeping in to be my favorite because it sounds pretty good. But here, here are the notes. So in the top, we have lemon, mint, and white flowers. Uh, in the mid, we have ginger, nutmeg, jasmine, and maguit, maguit flower. Um, and in the base, you round things off with the rose, musk, sandalwood, cedar, and Patchouli. Uh, again, excuse me uh, if if I pronounce that flower wrong. It's spelled M U G U E E T. So Maguet, Mague flower. And I'm not really sure what that flower is, guys. Uh, I just you know do these uh, videos for fun. Um, but let's give us a first impression because I'm I'm hoping this is this going to be the the piece de resistance. Let's let's check it out. Here we go. A couple sprays. Okay, again, guys, I'm really impressed by these sprayers. A lot of juice. I think this one sprays way more juice than the previous collection. Okay. Super citrusy. This smells like a designer fragrance that I've tried before. Um, but it's not a deal breaker. I'm getting the lemon. I'm getting a lot of that mint. I'm getting a ton of ginger. It's very zingy. Gives it a bit of a... Um, uh, uh, I think I already said zingy, but I always say use the, the term zingy when it comes to ginger. Um, it's nice, very fresh, definitely resembles. I mean, it, it resembles the blue bottle, even though I think it leans a little bit more green, but this is definitely going to be a summer release. This is going to be a very fresh fragrance. That mint is giving it a bit of mo a mojito feel, but, but not overall. It's like, uh, it's like starts off like a mojito with a little bit of ginger and some florals with some woody notes. Um, there's a ton of notes in this. I'm, I'm honestly, I'm not getting a lot of these. I know it's just the first couple of seconds here, but that ginger note is really going to be the main player right now. The ginger, the mint, and the lemon in this, in this opening. But this is nice. This is a nice little fresh fragrance. It smells like a more mainstream designer release, which is not a bad thing because you're going to need you know, you need to get the, the butts in the seats. So if you have more of a uh, crowd-pleasing fragrance, slightly reminding me of something, but um, the fragrance that, I, that I'm thinking doesn't have this note breakdown. So, but it does have a very designery mainstream feel to it. So, so I'll go back quickly and go over these uh, again one last time. So Golden Oud, and I'll go ahead and 
uh, pick up the bottle because I have a, you know, it's not an entirely crazy long video, but crazy enough. But Golden Oud. Okay. Very, very, very spicy. Very, very, very... It's like warm spicy, slightly fresh spicy. And woody. Um, definitely a winter fragrance. Definitely a nice fragrance, guys. If you like spicy oudy... And this isn't oud overkill either. You guys know what I'm talking about with the oud overkill. This is really more woody. It's, this is definitely more woody, spicy, slightly oudy. Not a bad fragrance if you like um, woody, spicy fragrances with a little bit of oud. Very nice fragrance. And I can't compare it to anything else. Not right now. Guys, you guys know, I even said that at the beginning of the video. If I if this reminds me of something, because I know that they can be a clone company, I'll let you guys know. Plus, honestly, it's easier for me to describe these fragrances if they do smell like something else. Because that, that way, it helps y'all out. But if I can't, then I'm sorry. But... All right, so Platinum Oud. Still reminds me of something, but I cannot remember um, what other fragrance this reminds me of. But I, I'm going to guess in the air, this one's going to smell super powdery and sweet in the air. On strip, it's not bad. It's just one of those things that I think you have to wear it and then you'll get this really nice cloud of all these notes combined to kind of give you this really nice sillage. But I will say up close, it's not my favorite. It's like it's like kind of citrusy, woody, powdery, sweet, vanilla, kind of. Now, finally, we have the Rose Oud and this is the one that had the bergamot and the pen peppercorn. The one that I said sort of reminded me of Royal Oud. Hmm, it definitely went away from that. In the dry down, what I'm left with is still a very spicy pink peppercorn and citrus. With with let this sort of reminds me a little bit of, like I said, of uh Royal Oud, but also of uh Eau de Beau by by Leocetane with less vanilla in it. So picture Eau de Beau by Leocetane with no uh with less vanilla and less benzoin. And you'll have this. This is very spicy, fresh, spicy, zingy, and slightly rosy. And this is supposed to be the rose oud, I believe, isn't it? Yeah, this is supposed to be the rose oud. Not sure if I said that before I picked this one back up, but and it has a slight rose feel to it. But honestly, remember I told you there's no rose note in the breakdown. Um, I'm starting to kind of feel like that that might be correct because. It's like a it's like a slight rose essence, but it's not like like I said, it's not grandma's rose. It's not your mom's rose fragrance. So I like this. This, this is actually a really nice masculine take on a rose fragrance. And I, I don't know if I can pick a favorite out of these three. Honestly, this this the the first one was was pretty was pretty darn good. Um, the golden oud, but man, I might have to go with the rose oud to be my favorite out of these three, out of these three here. Um, so. Now, moving on to the dry downs of the um, musk collection. We do have amber musk. Definitely getting an amber fragrance now. It's like slightly, slightly spicy, slightly animalic, but still fresh. And I'm still getting that rose. I'm still getting, I'm, so I'm getting the amber, the rose, the raspberry. And... Some sweetness. So, so definitely a lot of sweetness from the raspberry. Slight, slight oud, rose, and amber. This one right now is going to, right now, might be my favorite from this line. Musk Malachi or Maliki. Y'all let me know. Yeah. Definitely a floral bomb. Um, jasmine, <laughs> rose, and geranium. Not really sure what Narcissus is, but... Overall, I'm getting a very fresh, green, uh, floral fragrance that smells like spring. But unfortunately, to my nose, it leans a bit feminine. So, this one, if, the, if these, I'm under the assumption that all these are unisex because most of her main fragrances are. But if not, this one's definitely going to be a, a female fragrance. But I think that these are all unisex. I'm fairly certain because I think I looked on the website and they all had unisex uh, monikers underneath them. But this one is definitely feminine leaning. Now we have Royal Musk. 
Okay. Changed quite a bit. I'm definitely still getting the freshness on top, but this is like fresh, spicy. The black pepper is there. I think I said this one was pretty light, I think. Still very light, but not a bad little fragrance. And I think this would be a good, fresh, spicy fragrance to wear in the, in the heat. But yeah. Citrus, pepper, slight floral, musk. Not really getting the beeswax, but um, it could be in there somewhere. And finally, we have uh, the Musk Collection um, signature fragrance name. Yeah. Oh, man, I wish I could let you guys know what mainstream fragrance this reminds me of. But this smells really good, actually. This has like a um, fresh sort of um, fresh... Fresh, spicy, woody, like pencil shavings. And again, guys, I say that with respect because I actually like that smell. When, when people say, oh, it smells like pencil shavings, I like that. I'm getting a strong pencil shavings sort of woodiness. Freshness. And, man, this one this one might be up there. Top. There's a lot of ginger in this, too. Um this one might be the safest, though. This this uh, must collection might be the safest out of all four of those. Um, yeah, so I'll take that back. The am the amber musk is going to be definitely for the fall winter, and the must collection is going to be for the uh, spring summer. And I actually might wear this this must collection today because um, I haven't put anything on yet. And as you can see. Uh, it's playoff time in the the NBA, and my Mavs are going to go out there and win it today, hopefully, without my, my guy Luca. So uh, hopefully this will be my good luck charm, and I will wear this record today during the game. But guys, uh, that is my quick first impressions of the 50 Years Collection and the Amber Musk, uh, or the Musk Collection uh, series from Al Hermain. Guys, if you guys try these fragrances... Um, what are your thoughts on these fragrances? Let me know down in the comments below if you guys have seen any of these. Um, please check these fragrances out on their website. I will put the, uh, the link down in the description below. That way you guys can go there and shop. Um, uh, feel free to look around. Uh, I, when I did a video for them last time, it, they told me, hey, you know, you, you, they can buy them wherever they like, but we'd like for you to, to just share our link. That way they can go there. So you guys can get more information on these fragrances there. And... Uh, let me know uh, what you guys think about what's your favorite Al Hermain uh, Al Hermain fragrance. Let me know down in the comments below as well, because um, right now that that uh, some of these are really really good, but like that Royal Stallion, that Pegasus clone is actually pretty darn good. So if you guys haven't tried that one, get your notes on that one too, guys. But thank you all so much for watching the video on my channel. If you like this video, please click that like button, subscribe to my channel, and turn on notifications for future first impressions videos and first edit content just like this, guys. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Dollars and Cents. There you find first edit photos and future contest winners. And as always, guys, until next video, y'all take care. Thanks.